Welcome to Forward Public School e-learning class 10 subject English and I'm your teacher ma'am Rubina Gilani. Today we are going to start with unit number 3 that is dreams. Now let's start the poem. The point of this poem is Langston Hughes and the theme of the poem is the importance of dreams. So first, let's read the poem, Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. So if we paraphrase the first sentence in our own words, we can say that we should always hold fast or stick fast to our dreams because if we let the dreams die, our life will become just like a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Similarly, in the second stanza, we can say that we should always stick fast to our dreams and ne never let them go because if we let our dreams go or die, then our life will become just like a barren field which is frozen with snow and which cannot produce any vegetation or, f or fruit. Barren means a land which cannot produce anything. Urdu mein banjar kaise Now let's discuss the poetic devices used in the poem. There are many like personification, alliteration, metaphor and imagery etc. Now the main purpose of using these devices in poetry is to make the poetry more beautiful and meaningful and to get the message of the poet to the reader in a better way. So personification has been used in various lines in this poem. For example, hold, holding fast to dreams and uh, the dreams uh, dying similarly the dreams going let me for let me first tell you that personification is giving human or living qualities to non living things so the fact that we can hold to dreams is uh, is equivalent to as if we are personifying the dreams as if dreams is something which can hold uh, uh. and similarly uh, dreaming uh, dreams dying also means that like dreams is something some living thing which can die similarly dreaming dreams going is also suggesting the idea that that dream is something which is capable to go hence all these are examples of personification in this poem and it has been used in order to make the poem more beautiful and attractive. Similarly, alliteration is also used. Alliteration is the repetition of the similar, of the same consonant sound at the beginning of one or more words. For example, dreams die. So the consonant D has been repeated in both uh, the words at the beginning of both the words hence it is an example of alliteration that is repetition of the similar sound in two or more words now metaphor metaphor is the comparison is the direct comparison of two things for example in line number three life has been compared to a broken winged bird similarly over here life has been compared to a barren field now there are also e examples of imagery in the poem. Imagery is uh, when the words create a sort of image, clear, vivid and beautiful image in your mind. So like the image of uh, a broken winged bird has been used and similarly an image of a barren field has been used in the poem. Now the exercises. First one is write the correct option in the following statements. Number one, the phrase hold fast to dreams means A. Don't do anything, just dream day and night. B. Day dreaming is good for health. C. Dreaming will make you your holding power strong. D. Stick fast to your ambition in life. So the correct option is stick fast to your ambition in life. 
Number two, in the line, life is a broken winged bird, the poet uses the technique of A. Metaphor, B. Personification, C. Simile, D. Repetition. So the correct option is metaphor. Number two, life is a barren field. In this line, the phrase a barren field is simile, metaphor, personification, alliteration. So the correct option is metaphor. Number four, according to the poet, life without dream is hollow and bleak, lush and hopeful, dynamic and productive, passionate and optimistic. So the correct option is hollow and bleak. Uh, bleak means dark and hollow means empty. Number five, according to dreams, what will happen if your, our dreams die? So the correct option is life will be hopeless. Now, grammar exercise, transitive and intransitive verbs. Do as directed, choose the sentence that does not have an intransitive verb. So let me tell you first that transitive verbs are those which require a direct object. And intransitive verbs are those which do not require a direct object. So in the first sentence, the correct option is I watched a movie because it has an object movie while the rest of the examples I jog, the child gurgles and she sobs. They do not have objects with them. Number two, choose the sentence that does not have a transitive verb. So the correct option is she laughed heartily because heartily is not an object. So it is intransitive verb while the rest of the verbs are transitive. Similarly, number three, Choose the sentence that does not have a transitive verb. So the correct option is the birds are flying because it does not have a direct object. Hence, it is intransitive verb while the rest of the verbs have direct objects. Number four, choose the sentence that does not have an intransitive verb. So the correct option is the customer is buying pancakes because over here pancakes is the object. Similarly, D one is also correct because me is the object over here. Number five, choose the sentence that does not have a transitive verb. So the correct option is Asma shouted in the class because shouted over here is intransitive verb. While the rest of the examples are Examples of transitive verbs. Number six, choose the sentence that does not have an intransitive verb. So the correct option is A, the student is answering questions because questions is an object over here. So oh, this sentence is an example of transitive verb while the rest of the sentences are examples of intransitive verbs. Now the exercise with present participle or past participle. Present participle when you put ing with the verb and past participle is when you put ed with the verb or second form of the verb. So let's begin. In the first we'll use the past participle that is prepared by the best cook in the, the, the town. The meal was sheer poetry. Number two. After studying, so we'll use the present participle, studying all day, her head was aching in the evening. Number three, lying on the sofa, they were watching TV, so present participle. Everybody was shocked to hear the news, so past participle. Before leaving the house, I always check if all the lights are switched off, so we'll use the present participle. Now the next exercise using present and past participles is that combine the following pairs of sentences by using present and past participles. For example, we met a boy, he was carrying a heavy bag. So two sentences have been combined. We met a boy carrying a heavy bag. So present participle has been used in order to combine both of these sentences. So let's do the rest of the sentences. Number two, the house was decorated with lights. It looked beautiful. 
The house was decorated with lights looking beautiful. Number three, the robbers saw the policeman, they ran away. Seeing the policeman, comma, the robbers ran away. So we'll use the part present participle, seeing the policeman, the robbers ran away. Number four, I found the door open, I went inside. Finding the door open, I went inside. So we'll use the present participle, finding the door open, I went inside. Number five, the police saw the body. It was floating down the river. The police saw the body floating down the river. So we'll use the present participle for completing the sentence. Now let's discuss the clause. There are three types of clauses, main clauses, subordinate uh, clauses or relative clauses. So the main clauses are the ones which follow the pattern of subject plus verb and it has got complete thought. For example, lazy students always complain. So this is an example of a main or independent clause uh, in which uh, lazy students is the subject and complain is the verb and it is giving a complete thought. Similarly, water spilled over the glass and splashed onto the counter. This is also an example of a main or independent clause having the subject water and the verb splashed. Third example is my cat loves milk. Uh, it is also an example of independent or main clause with the subject my cat and verb loves. Now, subordinate clauses. Subordinate clause is the one which will have a subordinate conjunction plus subject plus verb and it will always have incomplete thought. That is why it is also called dependent clause because it will be incomplete and it will, it will always depend upon the independent or main clause to complete its meaning. For example, whenever lazy students complain. So whenever is the subordinate conjunction over here and lazy students is the subject, complain is the verb. So if you compare the main clause and the subordinate clause, Lazy students always complain and whenever lazy students complain. So, if you see the comparison, whenever or subordinate conjunction has been added, making it a subordinate clause. Uh, similarly, there are other types of subordinate conjunctions like as, because, if, whenever, whatever, and there are many of them. The important point to remember about subordinate clauses is that they never stand alone as complete sentences. To complete the thought, you must attach subordinate clause to a main clause. As I already told you, that subordinate clauses will always require a main clause to complete its meaning. For example, whenever lazy students complain, Mrs. Ramis throws chalk eraser on their heads. So this is a sentence having two clauses. One is main clause, one is subordinate clause. So when the first one is the subordinate clause because it is beginning with subordinate conjunction. And the second one, this one is the main clause. Number two. Amir ran for the paper towels as water spilled over the glass. Now in this sentence, the, this one, Amir ran for the paper towels is the main clause while as water spilled over the glass is the subordinate clause beginning with the subordinate conjunction as. Number three, because my cat loves milk, she never cat is rat. So in this, the first clause is subordinate, subordinate clause beginning with subordinate conjunction because. And the second one, she never catches a rat, is the main clause. So you see in all these examples, uh, the, the bold ones are subordinate clauses. They cannot stand alone. 
and uh, the other ones are main clauses and they can stand alone and they have a complete meaning while the subordinate clauses do not have complete meaning and they depend upon these main clauses to complete the sentence now relative clauses what is a relative clause it is always called a relative clause because it will begin with a relative pronoun such as who whom whose which or that or a relative verb for example when why or where let me tell you that relative clause is also a kind of a subordinate clause so it will relative clauses will also require a main clause to complete the sentence for example whom mrs ramiz hit in the head with a chalk eraser so whom is a, the relative pronoun and this clause is called the relative clause that had spilled over the glass and splashed onto the counter this is also an example of a relative clause beginning with the relative pronoun that similarly who loves milk is also example of a relative clause beginning with the relative pronoun who like subordinate clauses relative clauses also cannot stand alone as complete sentences you must connect them to the main clauses to finish the thought so as i told you that relative clauses are also a kind of subordinate clauses so they will always require a main clause to complete its meaning now see the examples of relative clauses the lazy students whom mrs ramiz hit in the head with a chalk eraser soon learned to keep their complaints to themselves so over here this bold one is the relative clause this is called essential relative clause because it uh, because we need the information it provides hence we call it essential relative clause and it will not require punctuation so we don't have to put commas before it or or after it so this is a complex sentence having two clauses one main clause the main clause is the lazy students soon learn to keep their complaints to themselves this is the main clause and this is the subordinate clause and it is relative subordinate clause okay dear students now second one my cat mano who loves milk drinks it under the kitchen table where she enjoys it with great enthusiasm so this is a also an example of a complex sentence having two subordinate clauses and one main clause and these two subordinate clauses are relative clauses because they are beginning with the relative pronouns who and the relative adverb where amir ran to get paper towels for the water that had spilled over the glass and splashed onto the counter this is also an example of a complex sentence having one main clause this one and one relative subordinate clause beginning with the relative pronoun that okay dear students now uh, let's discuss what is non essential relative clause it is the one which is not necessary for example this one my cat mano who loves milk so therefore we put punctuation so the so we can put punctuation with non essential relative clauses because they are not that much necessary for the Uh, sentence where is essential as the name indicates essential it is essential and we need its information now let's do the exercise read the sentences and decide if the bold words form a dependent independent or relative clauses so these are exam these are all sentences and we have to tell whether it has independent clause or dependent clause or relative clause so the first example uh, sentence is tahir did his homework before he went to bed so this sentence has two clauses the first one tahir did his homework this is independent clause because it has got complete meaning and the second one before he went to bed it is subordinate clause because it is beginning with subordinate conjunction before number 2 isn't that the woman who lives across the road from you 
so this part uh, the woman who lives this is a relative clause because it is who lives it is beginning with the relative pronoun who and the rest of the sentence is the independent clause isn't that the woman who lives across the road from you so who lives is relative clause number 3 because the test was so difficult none of the students got a very high grade because the students test was so difficult this is subordinate clause beginning with subordinate conjunction and none of the students got a very good grade is independent clause next one she is very fit because she goes running every day she is very fit is independent clause and because she goes running every day is subordinate clause beginning with subordinate conjunction because next one the police said the accident that happened last night was unavoidable so over here that happened last night is an example of a relative clause because it is beginning with a relative pronoun that while the rest of the sentence the police said the accident was avoidable is independent clause next one i don't like mondays this is a simple sentence having one independent clause there is no subordinate clause in this sentence next have you seen those people who we met on monday so who we met is an example of a relative clause beginning with relative pronoun are and the rest of the clause have you seen those people on holiday is an example of independent clause next can you tell me why you said that can you tell me is independent clause and why you said that is relative clause beginning with relative adverb why next you shouldn't believe everything that you read in the newspaper that you read is an example of relative clause beginning with relative pronoun that while you shouldn't believe everything in the newspaper is the independent clause next if you help me i will help you so the first one is dependent clause beginning with a uh, subordinate conjunction if and the second one i will help you is independent clause so dear students this was the poem and all the exercises i hope you understand it well thank you very much